everyone, it's me, Coffee Stitcher, with uh, some lilac in my hair, which shows up better in the sun, but it's there. It's real pretty. Um, how's everybody's week? It's really good to hear. I'm drinking from my Hello Dolly mug. It says, isn't the world full of wonderful things? And generally, yeah, it is. Myself included. I'm humble too, you know. Uh, how was everybody's week? Good. I already asked that, didn't I? I'm still kind of waking up. Mm. I'm glad everybody had a good week, or if you didn't have a good week, I'm sorry that you didn't have a good week. Mm. Ah. Alright, so we've got some Q and A. Um, we have a surprise piece of haul that I found in a bag. I didn't even know I had this, but I'm not sure where it came from either. But it was there, so I'll show it to you. Um, then I've got whip updates and next week's plan. So we'll dive right on in. Um, Shirley Miranaka, who I've not heard from in a while, so I was glad excited to see her pop up this morning. Um asks, do you have a couple of questions? First, do you have a cross-stitching pet peeve? And my answer is yes, I have a couple. Um, I hate when designers use just the one single black dot that's basically a period, especially if backstitch goes over it, because it can be very difficult to tell if you're supposed to stitch in that square or not, other than the backstitch. So that's a pet peeve of mine. Um... Another pet peeve is, of course, the when you are almost through with the color, but you don't have enough thread to get the last, like, stitch or two. So you have to use a whole new length for two stitches. And it's not as bad if it's already from a length you've cut and you're just pulling two... <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> One or two ply, but when you actually have to cut it off of the skein <laughs> just for two stitches. I hate that. Um... I also hate when the page breaks and there's just one stitch of one color needed on that next page, but you don't realize it until after you've turned the page and you've already ended things. Yeah, that annoys me too. But in the long run, those are probably about it. Um, yes. Um, and then she asks, will you be dressing up for Halloween? Yes, uh, I haven't totally decided yet what I'll be, um, but yes, I will be dressing up for Halloween at work. Uh, and then she asks, how do you start your stitch if you only use one thread? Um, I do a couple of different methods. Most of the time what I do is I just hold the tail until I stitch over the tail. Um, if I'm able to secure it under other stitches, I will. And if it's one of those things where holding it where it's a light colored fabric so holding the tail would be a bad idea then I'll do the pin stitch for the 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 bottom and then just do my leg over it um Jessa Adair sorry but not sorry for enabling you about the soda stitch patterns which you'll get here eventually and see my response Um, also, thank you to everyone who was suggesting, um, necklace ideas for the homework last week. I did end up using Universal Monsters. Um, Karen Lynch, thank you for... Yes, it was Mr. Spooner. Um, let's see. Trying to find more of the Q&A. Um, I'm 
Dorothy Stitches at, says, I saw on Instagram that you're doing an it pattern. I'm too scared to do that one. And it got me wondering if there's any topics you won't do, whether it's because, be because it scares you or another reason. Um, I'm generally not terribly inclined towards religious patterns um, outside of the traditionally Christian ones, primarily because I feel like that's cultural appropriation. Um, because I'm not of that, I don't won't do sugar skulls for the same reason. Since I, to me, it I don't understand the culture or the or the religion enough to feel like I can justifiably stitch this and hang this in my home. Um, sub, uh, similarly related, I will not stitch Ouija boards <laughs> or pentagrams <laughs> because. With my luck, I'm going to uh, prick my finger while stitching it, bleed on the project, and summon a demon. Because that's how my luck goes. So, I won't stitch on those. Um, trying to get other things I won't stitch, topic-wise, at least. Um, yeah, I think that's largely it. Anything that's like a real... Um, now, and... When I say cultural, I don't mean, like, the Tempting Tangles, like, Quakers Inn series, um, because that's more landscape and architecture and not, like, the Sugar Skulls, which is Dia de los Muertos, which is not Mexican Halloween, um, but a lot of people treat it like that, and that bothers me. So, I won't do it. Um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't, I just don't feel comfortable doing it because I feel like it's cultural appropriation. Um, and that's something I try really hard to be very sensitive to. Um, but that's just me. Um, yeah. Um, Isabel's Moments with Crafts mentions that she thinks I may have posted two of the same video. I guess I need to go back and look. I missed her comment when she made that, made it last week. Um, I had weirdness where it wasn't wanting to process and post, so I re-uploaded, so I may have accidentally posted it twice and not realized it. Um, but it did that thing where it hangs up right at the end. So, if I did, if I posted it twice, I hope you didn't watch it twice because it was the same, back, same exact video. Um, Subi, I hope you can get a Great Cheshire Pumpkin from Tempting Tangle's website. She does offer both charts and PDF formats. Um, uh, and it's, I believe, just temptingtangles.com now. Um, let me, let me double check that just real quick. Um, because I'm not surprised that 123Stitch stole out. It seems like anytime anyone really does a big finish of a project and we all see it, we're like, oh, we need to buy this now. So we all rush out and order it or buy it from 123Stitch. Um, well, I'd love to think that I influenced that. I, I don't know. But my ego tells me, yes, I did. So we're going to go with that. Pull gem humble. Um... I think this is the right. I'm waiting on the page to to load. I'll come back to it once I see what's happened. Oop. Um. Marika Backness asks if I've ever checked out Gecko Rouge. Uh, they do full coverage, but they have a whole bunch of different sizes. Um, I ha have seen it. I I'm just not a full coverage fan. Like, I think they're, I, I like a lot of the images, but I'm too picky about how the finished product looks, and without backstitch, and without blending, it just seems like most of those, um, it, it just doesn't seem like, like most of them are what I would like it to be. Let's try this. Tunningtables.com didn't work. Let me look it up real quick. Because she's got a new website. Uh... 
Ah. Okay. Here, I'll look it up this way. Sorry about this, y'all. I should have probably been more prepared. I say, I know the links are all over Deb's pages. It's temptingtanglesdesigns.com. So I was close. Tempting Tangles Designs, Sue. So you can get them there. Um. see it's also being weird and not loading anything beyond that oh it's being weird okay i don't th that may be the end of the q and a it may not be oh here we go finally um yep that was the end okay all right so the surprise little bit of haul that i found um, in my bag, it is a uh, black swan design um, called In the Forest. Um, and it's a it's a snow globe. Like I said I'm not not totally sure where this came from, but I like it. It's a lady with a unicorn and a wisteria tree. So yeah, don't know when I'll do that, but I just I found it. All right. So, homework for this week. We had um, six things to stitch on and then a bonus. So, I worked on... So, the first one was trust. We had to work on a project that we're trusting the pattern on. Um, and I worked on my Georgie and Pennywise. So, I finished out the pavement under him. And I'm just trusting these colors. Um, so I got his pavement done, which is actually a little more than 200 stitches, but it's okay. So next I just have the letters IT, and then I've got the balloon and Pennywise's eyes. So um, hopefully this will be a pretty quick finish, um, which will give me plenty of time to get it framed for Christmas. Um, then the next one I worked on was the cave where, um, we had to work on something with an entryway. So I worked on Nevermore by Prairie Schooler. And again, this is my color conversion that I've been doing. So here's where I'm at. I finished out the bird, um, the two birds. So we've got Nevermore and the birds. And then I started on the graves. So in the graves I'm using, um, the darker graves are 10 bucket from General Arts. So I'm really enjoying this one. So it'll stay out to play for a while, even though Darktober is nearly over and I'm not actually working on anything Darktober this week. So there you go. Um, basically Darktober is over now. Um, then for, we could work on either dark cold or light warmth. So I worked on Jenny Bean's Halloween. Oh, sad. Okay. Um, and I filled in the oatmeal parts of the house. And then I started in on the, uh, the front part of the house. So just filling in that. So I'm definitely looking, I'm enjoying this one, but I'm definitely looking forward to being done with the house because I think after that, it'll probably move fairly quickly because um, it's a lot less solid. It's, there's no more real solid fill per se. Um, for Sectum Simpra, where we had to work on a project that could, had breaks in it, um, I worked on Words to Live By. And I got 
the purple, the dark, one of the shades of purple done in the words. So it was really nice to actually pull out and work on this, uh, and work on something that didn't just, wasn't just row and row and row of yellow. So I'm looking for once, I'm sure once I get past the, its little banner, which here's the full thing. I'm sure once I get past this little banner here and finish up the, the sun, because this isn't going to be too bad, the balloon. Once I think once I get done with that, it's going to move real quick, and then I can start to on the rest of the pattern. So, because I do enjoy this one. Yep. All right, then for boat, we worked with something that started, it had to start with one of the letters designer. So this is Kristen Ashley, A for Ashley. Um, and I worked on Pride and Prejudice Sal. And that's what I got done. So, and I discovered that I actually misstitched a little, so I've got to do a tiny bit of frogging. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I find the green a little on the tedious side. Um, I was very excited to start in on the yellow. <laughs> Um, uh, so I'm definitely going to be doing, I think, adding a couple of colors to the project and doing a little bit of chain tweaking to it, I believe. Um, probably not until after the final part has come out, because I kind of want to make sure that I'm not going to, um, overload it on another color the wrong way. So I, it's not going to be huge, but it's going to be a couple of minor things. Um, then for Aguamenti and the necklace, I worked on Universal Monsters. So I got all the ghosts that are on this area done. There's one more ghost over here. Um, I started the clouds and I started filling in the light in the windows. So getting, getting nice and spoopy up in here. Yes. All right. And that took care of homework. Now, other things I worked on this week, I did work, finish up the blue ribbon in um, Woodland Ferry. So that part. So today I get to start the tree. I'm super excited. I'm moving on to something that's not dress and ribbon. Um, so I'll start the tree. Um, and then I'm, my plan is to do the tree and then all the leaves that are down here and then move back up and do the top half. So, and then I finished out one of the extra credits, um, which was stitch on something that's part of a collection. So I worked on Nutcracker from Soda Stitch and I got 500 stitches on this. So I finished out the middle part this is on Christmas in Williamsburg by Under the Sea Fabrics and the Gold Opal. Um, it's super pretty. A little difficult to stitch on without extra lighting. Um, the one thing I'm not a huge fan of with the gold is um, occasionally I have a little trouble finding the hole, but that's a me thing, not a, not a Leslie thing. That's a, I have crappy eyes. There we go. So I worked on that. All right, so that's what I worked on this last week. Now this week, um, we're actually doing something a little different. We are straddling um, book six and seven because the week ends, on, the month ends on Thursday. Um, but because Dumbledore's passing carries over through the start of the first book, and because it was gonna be a weird break in where the week ended, we decided we would just carry it over. So, um, what we have to do is a spell out of Dumbledore's name. Um, as long as, uh, I'm trying to, just slipped. Um, so you have to do a spell out of Dumbledore's name. The, uh, trying to, just as long as we can make it work for the letter. That's what I'm trying to say. As long as we can make it work for the letter, then it'll count for um, 
then it's okay to use. It's 100 points per letter. Because the D and the E are repeated, if we need to, we can use the same thing twice. So for instance, if your project has dress, you can count that for both Ds. So 200 stitches, dress, dress. Um, it's one point per letter, so it's 10 letters. But if you can use the same project for all of them, you get a bonus 20 points. That's 30 points, y'all. So, since the last part officially came out, which makes me very sad, um, I will be doing my Owl Forest Emerald City. Um, now, I've got about 1,300 stitches left on it. So, 100 of those is going to go towards um, finishing out one of the extra credits. Um, but the rest will go to the homework. So here's, of course, where I'm at. I did go through and pick my beads up yesterday. But to spell it out for those that are curious, the first D is for good old Dorothy. Um, the U is for umbrella, because the witch is holding an umbrella. Ella, Ella, hey. Okay. Um, M is for mice, and there are the field mice down here. B is for the bucket of water, also for Dorothy's basket. Um, L is for the lion. Rawr. E is for, of course, Emerald City. Um, the second D is for dog, also Toto. Um, o is for the entire thing, which is Oz. R is for the ruby slippers, which are down there and will also show up over here. And then E, the second E, is partially for evil, for the Wicked Witch. E for entrance. And E. Yeah, so Entrance to the Emerald City and the Evil Witch. So, yeah. So we've got Glinda, the Ruby Slippers, and then the house in Kansas. And then that's the end. And I'm very, very sad by that. Um, and I've also got to go back, because I was not anticipating, because I went through and I was like, oh, we can probably take out most of these colors that I don't really need, think I'm going to need again, because we've never repeated colors. Uh, so I've got to go back and re-pull my house colors from, uh, when I stitched this the first time. It's caramel, I know, but I forget what the other one is. Um, fortunately I have that written down. <laughs> um, but yeah. So that is that. So that'll start up tomorrow. And then... Today I will work on, I'm going to try to get the, at least the tree branch itself done. Um, I may not get the individual branches done, but I'm at least aiming for the, the, regular, the main tree branch um, that she's sitting on. We shall see how successful I am. Anyhow, um, that's it for moi. Um, I hope everyone has a terrific rest of your week. Um, or start to your week, and I will see you all next time.